Hmm, interesting episode <laughs> to see the aftermath <laughs> of, of Aldani, of the events of Aldani. Yep. Mm. And we're back to the slow paced episodes again. Mm. So it is quite interesting that um, they've introduced that character um, at a dinner, Tay, um, the character of Tay, and I'm wondering whether he's going to become more involved in this rebellion. Because mm. Luthen was reluctant to bring anybody new, but who knows? I think I think this new guy might be, you know, important. <laughs> mm. Yep, and several name drops in the show as well. Yeah. Like Palpatine being a big one. Oh, yeah, that's the Emperor of Palpatine is the big one. For sure, yeah. Marcus, you there? Marcus? Bill? <laughs> Guys? Oh, yes, yes. It's a very slow episode, this one. <laughs> it is. <laughs> but I was curious, yeah, about... <clears throat> what happened as well with um you know like how he yeah so it, it looks like it, it jumped back in time to when um Cassian was known as Keith Gurgo when he was pretending to be somebody else and oh yes mm-hmm. yeah that seems to be the jump back in time because he, he was sentenced to six years in prison I remember sorry that. what happened Bill I said it was so slow. Put my just like. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't say this thing. <laughs> so everyone thought it was so slow, but I guess there were some interesting. But there were some interesting tidbits there. Mm-hmm. I think there's there's a hint that you know activities are beginning to ramp up for um, the rebellion. That this robbery, I mean, obviously it's a way to get money to fund the rebellion. But it looks like, yeah, Luthen is willing to just push forward into doing even more, um, yeah. more action. Um, yeah, and he doesn't tend to care about many of the, mm. the fallout. Mm. Well, he's, he's playing both sides anyway, right? Yeah, it does seem so. Yeah. So. yeah. He, like the Mon Mothma, he he is um, pretending to be something that he's not, but it's all just a front. It's an act. And behind the scenes, they're working on rebellion. So yeah, very interesting. So what side is he really on? Or is he just like just yeah, bounty hunter? I think he's he's on the side of whichever he thinks is winning. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> Well, bounty hunters go with the money is so probably more like a bounty hunter or like mm. could be probably he's probably yeah. in charge of one of the cartels or whatever. Mon Mothma, yes. Yeah, I was gonna say you know um, he's gonna be on the side of. Uh, um, what's best for him what's best and for him? Uh, yeah. where he can uh, get the most money mm-hmm. yeah yeah so it doesn't matter if it's the rebellion or the empire no I don't get, I don't think so mm. no, I know maybe, maybe he's sympathetic to the rebellion yeah <laughs> I think he's definitely for now on the side of the rebellion um, mm. he clearly doesn't like the way that the empire is encroaching on everyone. Um, so, yeah, I think like we can see that almost everywhere they're, you know, tightening their grip and control of so many different areas like Ferrex. Yeah. But I think this episode, I think someone said, right? I think what's interesting is, is uh, the flash flashback. Back, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So mm. at the end was the flashback when he got yeah uh, yeah so so this this flashback scene and then this flashback was also another one where Clem who was uh, I remember he and Marva were the ones who discovered him when he was a child because they were trying to rob <laughs> they were trying to kind of rob an imperial ship wasn't it weren't they um, so um, that's yeah. Yeah, it's quite sad because I didn't know what had happened to him, you know, afterwards. Um, so it looks like that's what happened. 
Yeah, but we go back seeing the clone troopers again. So yeah, these, these... it's been a long time since we've seen them. Clone trooper flashback. Yeah, and it's interesting that he used Clem's name when he um as when he was introducing himself to um that team that Luthen put together to rob mm. uh, the garrison at Aldami. It's interesting to see both clone troopers and stormtroopers in the same episode. Mm. It's quite interesting, yeah. Since they're both in two different eras. Mm. He used that seat to escape with his mom. Who? Oh, the mom? Yeah, did they succeed to escape? Well, the mom wanted to stay. She didn't want to leave Ferrix. And then yeah, he, he had to, to he can't stay. So like he mm. she would rather stay in and be part of the resistance and fight them. So yeah. Yeah. And wow. good to see that droid at the end of the episode as well. Yeah, seeing that droid, it's like, oh. <laughs> Probably not the same droid, but mm. it's kind of a hint of Reg One. Yeah. It's coming. Mm. Oh, the red, the red one, like because of our mm. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. Right. Yeah, it's an okay episode. Quite slow. Mm. It's quite slow, but I think there are some interesting bits to it. I think I'm sure people can find uh, a bunch of Easter eggs <laughs> in this. Um, what about that female senator? You think she's gonna be the good one or the bad one? The uh, Mon Mothma. Um, she's good. No, no, she's one of the rebellion. Yeah, she, she was... yeah, yeah. Mon Mothma is definitely good because we yeah. we yeah. know from episodes, uh, well, four, five, six. Yeah, because that, she's that one she... of the main yeah. parts of the rebellion, mm. or the rebels. Mm. So once they introduce the characters, we kind of already know where they're heading. Mm. Since it's in that period in between episodes three and four. four. Yeah. Actually three and reg one. Three and reg one, yes. <clears throat> so yeah, um, a bit more story in between the two. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, Easter eggs, there's a few, there's, ooh. It says it's inspired by Leia's speech in uh, A New Hope. The more you tighten your great talking, the more star systems will slip through your fingers. Hmm. <laughs> it's interesting that we haven't seen talking yet. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it sort of, in a way that this is what Luthan was planning. Like when he said he wants the Empire to overreact. And mm. because they overreact, it will make the rebellion stronger because it will unite the people who are really sick of them, you know, the Imperial mm. Party kind of being so overbearing. Like yep. in the past, they've tolerated it because it wasn't too bad. But now. Once they start attacking everything, then yeah, of course, they will unite more people. Yeah. Just Colonel, you, 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 Lauren, you, Lauren. Yes, introduced in this episode. But we apparently he, uh, he, he's a bridge officer on the first Death Star. Oh. And he, he dies when, when oh. Luke destroys the Death Star. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So he was, he was there and he was part of that development, I guess. So he was on the first Death Star. Yeah. Episode four. Yeah. Mm. So this is like his first um, introduction in here, in the earlier part of the... Mm. Um, Imperial surveillance, they... Oh, Stormtroopers finally appear. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we see both clone troopers and Stormtroopers in the same episode. Mm. Yes. That was an interesting one. Interesting one, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, but it's interesting now that it's a uh, surveillance status. We say it's surveillance. Because sections are high. 
that tends to happen, especially like now. Mm. They really want to talk about the real war that's going on. Yeah. Apparently the Rebel Alliance is still... Hmm? Well, I don't know. Different sectors. Mm. That's how they operate. Yeah, so they're not really united yet. Mm. It's because they they were, yeah, like I mentioned before, they're a bit too bureaucratic. And that's the reason why they didn't notice patterns like these. You know, people were, you know, territorial <laughs> about their own jurisdiction. So they didn't want to share information. And um, that's how the rebels were able to get away with doing so much sort of. Yeah. Um, and being able to get away with it, um, like stealing things, you know, different yeah. types of equipment across all different sectors and without being noticed. Mm. Yeah. And of course, each cell would act differently, like, yeah. Well, they sort of rebellions. Mm -hmm. So these three people that know about Mon Mothma, it must be um, obviously Luther is one. Um, uh, take take Homa, the old friend. Looks like she wants to recruit him. And the likely that the third person is Bell Organa. Yes. Mm. Which we haven't seen yet in the series. Yeah. Yeah, we have but, seen them in. Yeah, but if they bring him back, it will probably be the same actor again. I reckon they will find a way to link it, you know. It, so in a way, it's, it's linking the Obi Wan series with this by having Bail Organa. Yeah. yeah, because it's set in around the same time period. So yeah, and they yeah. have Bail Organa in Obi Wan. Yeah. So there's no reason why they can't add him to the show. And he's one of the senators, so sooner or later he will probably make an appearance. Um, Mon Mothma, I don't think she knows who Leia really is. Yeah, Leia is. Yeah, the interesting you know, um, if she finds out <laughs> later on. Mm. Yeah, yeah, clone troopers. Yes, yes, yes. Clone yeah. troopers. Before so, stormtroopers. Yeah. So there are five more episodes left for the series. Twelve. Twelve altogether, yes. Out of twelve, yes. Mm. Mm. So, yeah, I I think this is why they're going from like some good episodes, some slow episodes. They're like still taking their time. Mm. Yeah, they can take their time. Mm. I suppose because they've got 12 episodes um, in this season, they, they can sort of... And the second out. season already known as well with more episodes. Yeah. <clears throat> Odd Montel. Yeah, we, we saw this uh, Montel, that's, in yeah. Bad Patch. Yeah. <laughs> So that's been mentioned. Yeah, yeah so, linking it to the Bad Batch, which is also in the same time period. There are a lot of stories down this, this mm. similar time period. Mm. Short Troopers. <laughs> Short Troopers. <laughs> so, the guy who said that he looked dodgy. <laughs> it's got an Imperial Short Trooper. And then there's prop droids, there's security droids. Mm. So yeah. flashback. Mm. So that was an interesting ending as well. So he's in that prison. Yeah, that's a flashback, right? It's that that was a flashback. Yeah. Mm, yeah. So do you think? But it's interesting how they mm. ended up that scene. Mm. Do you think moving forward they'll keep flashing back and forth? Probably. Okay. Considering that they ended at that particular point. I think just to give it a little bit more background and context of, you know, Cassian's, what, what he's experienced through the years, because we sort of had that time jump from when he was like the only survivor of Kilani and then suddenly to where he is now. But there was really nothing in between that kind of sort of helps you find out what, what really happened to him. And yeah. Like the, those years in prison, you know, mm. that was kind of just mentioned, but not really explored much until now. So, yeah. 
Mm. So I think maybe that was the purpose of this kind of episode was just to kind of go back a little bit. Yeah. To flesh that out a bit more. So maybe they'll, they'll, they might, you know, flesh out his prison years a bit more, maybe in the next episode. I don't know whether mm. that's plan. Probably. Mm. We'll see where it ends. Yeah. Especially if it's going episode by episode. We don't really know what's coming. Mm. Like, it, it, it's hard to predict whether, is it going to be another slow episode? Like, where there's a lot of exposition, a lot of background? Or is it going to be another action episode? You know, who knows? <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. Mm. Yep. And... Yeah, it was kind of interesting with, there was a bit of a music which kind of stood out in the show, it seems, as they called EDM. Mm. And apparently, from what I heard, someone actually did put it on YouTube, the EDM mix of this episode. Oh, okay. <laughs> Now that's interesting. Like in the club, Neamos, it's called. Oh, yeah, yeah. There, there's, yeah. I mean, it's a resort, so you sort of expect people to go to clubs and, you know, <laughs> enjoy themselves there. It's like a beach kind of resort. Yep, so they had an instanted club mix, which a lot of people liked for this episode. So, so Neamos is like the equivalent of Ibiza. <laughs> Yeah, so the, it apparently oh. it was an instant music hit. A bit like Agatha all along. <laughs> like that small little bit of music just becomes super popular. So mm -hmm. they did it again. <laughs> yep, mm. so it's, yeah. The Amos, huh? the club mix, EDM. EDM. You can find it on YouTube. <laughs> That's cool. Now I'm wondering if the clubs going around now just playing that music because it's just too going popular. Yeah. That would be funny if it was actually if it would actually be sampled by a DJ. In a club, you know what I mean? Like, I, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised because EDM or club is quite popular anyway. <laughs> they do like a bit of EDM myself, like uh, Alan Walker, it's essentially my favorite mm. in EDM. So, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if someone used that <laughs> as a track. Like it, even Alan Walker has played around with Star Wars a bit. Okay. In some of his music called because he has a song called Dark Side. Mm. Yeah. And in one of the concerts before, he actually had had played in the Imperial March in the Dark Side song. Oh, okay. Oh, that's like that was just like super <laughs> super cool. Mm -hmm. Yep, so yeah, I'm sure some someone would take it up to put in the tracks to put in that'd be fun. The mix. <laughs> yeah. Maybe soon. Mm. It's on YouTube now, so anyone could pick it up. So yeah, they could. They could easily sample it. <laughs> we'll likely hear it more in some clubs eventually. Mm. Yep, so that's a bit of a music hint. Mm -hmm. uh, but overall, did we we might have covered a lot of this episode already. A lot of yeah. political stuff happened. There's definitely a lot of politics behind the scenes, and it seems to me like with that there there are some politicians, some senators who are, you know, aside from Mon Mothma, who probably do feel the same way that they are sort of secretly working against the empire mm. it'd be interesting to see who else is involved possibly involved in the rebellion that we haven't heard about 
we know Bill Organa is obviously going to be part of it. Um, he's already part of it. And then, yeah, so someone like Tacoma would be brought in as well. Because he clearly doesn't like what the Empire is doing. And he's probably in a position to, to help out with the funding side of things. Hmm. Yep. I'm sure there are a lot more senators that will partner up, but hmm. they it doesn't seem like they have yet any leadership for the rebellion. Like at the moment, they're like several splinter cells. <sighs> yeah. And each cell would be doing their own thing. They're not really united. Yeah. Mm. Okay, I, I can start seeing a pattern with uh, Endo. So the pattern is you get two slow episodes of build up and then a massive payoff. Mm. And then two episodes of build up, massive payoff. We saw that in episode one and two, right? Slow build up. Episode three was quite fast paced. Three, three was and then we had four and five, which are kind of slow. And then last week, six was really, really good. Yeah, yeah. So now we're back to the, the slow one, and I'm expecting another slow one before, <laughs> before so we have episode another. nine. So episode nine would be the build-up one, and the finale would be a big and one. The finale would be another big one. Well, the finale will always be a big one because it's the finale, right? The season mm -hmm. finale is always action packed. No, it's it's it's, it's kind of feels like it's like three episode arcs, you know. Oh, okay, yeah. Which is because this one seems to be starting something new. Yeah, like no, whereas no. the first, obviously, the last episode like the was the episode. payoff to the heist yeah. uh, storyline. Yeah. So it seems to be we can maybe expect like. A three episode kind of mini story. <clears throat> yeah, I think you do have a point there because the whole Adani sequence were in those three episodes, and the first three episodes also dealt with Cassian's past. Yes. Because they did the flashbacks to the planet as well. So mm. I think you're onto something there, Marcus. Yeah. I think <laughs> sure. <laughs> so this, so this upcoming so this this particular story arc has just started i wonder if it's to do with the rebel alliance coming together a bit more in an organized way um, the, i don't think they ever were too organized because uh, even in star wars rebels the rebel group that we follow was also another one of those cells mm, okay and effectively rebels does end with some of them like grouping up, but not really. Mm. I'm sure there are still a lot of cell other cells which do want to fight, but not but they're not like under a proper banner. Mm. Okay. Mm. So I'm still thinking it would be like that. They probably won't be too combined. Mm. Could be here. Yeah. No proper leadership yet. Mm. Or they haven't built a leadership yet. Mm. But then if it comes to a rebellion, it's for some, as they said, it's better to have cells because what's the easiest way to destroy the rebellion if they grouped up together? Mm. Destroy the main. Mm. And then they wipe them all out in one go instead of separate cells, even though they're not really united. Mm. I suppose it's also easier when it's a se separate cells because then they can do they their do their own thing. thing. Like some yeah. might be more extreme than others, mm. as we know from the cell in Red One. Yeah, uh, with that uh, what was that guy's name again on that planet? That that guy was essentially an extremist, but he was still a, a rebel. Mm. So yeah, there are a lot of different cells which can be more political, some which fight in the background, and some more extreme. Uh, I just forgot that guy's name. Are you talking about Forrest Whitaker's character? Which, um, 
I'm not sure. Which one? Which yeah, he died on that planet. Uh, oh, yeah, for us with Sogarera. Sogarera, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they considered him an extremist in the rebellion. Okay. Because, yeah, he, he fought a lot. Hmm. And the other rebels didn't really like his style, but still, he was... He was instrumental. He was, he was instrumental. He was an extremist in the rebel group, but... And, and each, he was... Each, each cell does their own thing. It does, yeah. They have their own strengths, so each yeah. one can do their own thing. And Cassian did eventually work with him. And yeah, with eventually. Him and Jin, Jin Erso, you know, to get the plans of um, before. Yeah, that's right. And, and you know, I, I think if it wasn't for him, you know, they probably wouldn't have been able to get to be in a position to get those plans. So, yeah. So that's coming up in Rogue One. We do already do know that story, but. Yeah. Again, it's kind of showing that the cells, even in Rogue One, weren't really united. Yeah, They knew about each other, but mm. there are some strategies which they wouldn't agree on. Mm. And sometimes that is better than a combined one, because if they were really all combined, it's just easier for the enemy to, to destroy their headquarters mm. with everyone in it. Mm. So, yeah, that's good. Yeah, I wonder if if we we will get to see Sol Guerrera in in this season or maybe next season at some point in Andor. It is possible. Hmm. Be interesting if you put in some kind of appearance. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe season one or in season two. Hmm. Depends on where they want to lead the show. Hmm. Or maybe in Andor, they might show the more extremist side of Saw Gerrera, because we know in Rogue One that they already considered him an extremist. Yeah. And he was also in the Clone Wars, fought next to, like, Obi-Wan. Yeah. But I guess we'll eventually see how he works. Mm. Because we never really see, see his full strategy is except in the Clone Wars. Mm. But fighting as a rebel, I'm really interested in seeing that. Yeah. Because I hope, I hope how, how was he actually considered an extremist if we haven't seen him do anything yet? Like in Rogue One, yeah. we, we don't really know. Yeah. So it'd be interesting if they do explore that in, in this series. And yeah. I hope they do. You know, again, flesh out. You know the stories of of all these kind of characters that we saw in Rogue One, mm. and even you know Jin Erso's uh, father. You know, was mm. you know <clears throat> interesting to see whether he might make an appearance at some point. Mm. And I guess as well, if they're trying to flesh out a story, they probably didn't even have to just do it in Andor, mm. because Tales of the Jedi is starting up next week. Yeah. So that we might see other stories in canon for particular characters. Yeah. And apparently it's it's probably not in order either. Mm -hmm. They'll be in canon, but they're telling stories of a lot of different characters. Yeah. But not, I yeah. guess maybe not Sagarara because it's called Tales of the Jedi. <laughs> I think it will focus more on the Jedi. So, you know, it'll be, I don't know, count, it'll be count, uh, it'll be, you know, Qui Gon, you know, it'd be other kind of Jedi tales, you know? Yep. yep. They already confirmed Qui Gon, mm -hmm. uh, Count Dooku, Ahsoka. Yeah. So it'd be really good to, yeah, flesh out their stories too. Yep. So Ahsoka would be the, animated cast voice actor mm -hmm. and Liam Neeson is Liam back. coming back yeah well it's That's really quite, uh, it, it would be hard to try to replicate his voice anyway he has such a distinctive voice that you know I'm glad that he is <laughs> able to come back yeah and, and properly do the voice you know um, 
Yep. Unfortunately, they couldn't get that Mace Windu. I mean, they have Mace Windu, but in the show, but it would be a different voice actor. Yeah, but I guess couldn't be helped because of the scheduling conflict with Secret Invasion. So that too. Yeah. Which Secret Invasion does look kind of cool. That's coming soon. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Hmm. Yeah, but I think we might have covered everything. Should we get to our scores? Yes, let's get to our scores. So maybe Jeff, Bill. Um, Bill is still there. Maybe <laughs> uh, Jeff, you go first. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was all right. I think I agree with you guys. A lot of characters um, yeah, just to see what we And it looks like it's, yeah, like how the Imperial, how they infiltrating the Imperial side, you could say. See how that turns out. How many episodes are there to go? Five. Five, oh, five more. Five more. Oh, still yeah. a long way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what, they, what follows on now. I'll give this one uh, probably a seven, I think. Yeah. Based on all of that. Should be good. Yeah. Okay, seven from Jeff. Bill? Bill, are you still there? Mm, you know, no. Um, all right, then, Steph? I think a 6.5 for me. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, obviously it's a slower episode, but there's a lot of interesting tidbits in there as well. Um, you know, in interesting background information. So I think even though it's not like an action packed kind of episode, I still found it quite interesting. So yeah, it, it's good to sort of see, you know, where people stand and sort of, and, and seeing both sides as well. Like, I like that it's quite balanced in the way that it, it portrays the rebellion side, but it's also portraying the empire side. Like it's paying sort of equal attention to what's happening on both sides, which we don't normally see that much in the movies. You know, um, I think it, it, it's kind of nice to see that the characters from both sides being equally kind of fleshed out and um, mm -hmm. seeing, you know, like, you know, whether it's someone like, um, like Miro um, or Belvin, <laughs> you know, trying to remember the names, but yeah, seeing how the Empire works versus the the way that the rebel the rebel alliance works, and it's having that contrast is very interesting. Yeah. So yeah, I, I liked it for for that because again, it, it sort of really explores how they both sides work. Um, yeah. And I'm curious to see what the next episode will bring. Yeah. And Vel looks very different here. <laughs> when when we see when we see her meet up, right? Um, with um, the um, one of the workers from the museum, or Luther, mm. you know, what, um, she looks so different. <laughs> so I wonder what her front is. You know, like. I wonder what she is, you know, when she's not part of the doing, re you know, rebel work. Like, like you know, when we see her, she looks like a shepherd, you know, like mm. <laughs> when she was planning that robbery. But in her back to normal life, you know, what, you know, I wonder what her real job is, you know, as a front, you know, in the, in the empire. Like, yeah. what, how does she present herself to the empire? Hmm. What was the score? 6.5 for me. 6.5. Hmm. Bill, are you back? Bill? Bill? Uh, Marcus? Um, yeah, this one is obviously is always hard to follow a really, really good episode like last week's. Um, so, because last week, last week was really, really, real high point uh in the series this one 
I mean, this this one is is obviously trying to set set up another sort of mini mini arc <clears throat> in the series. <clears throat> so yeah, so the pace is a little bit slower. Um, it, but it you know it's a slow build up as we've seen in Endor. There's this pattern that I mentioned before of slow build up, payoff, <clears throat> and then back to slow build up, payoff. Mm -hmm. So now we're starting another uh, build up, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Which I guess it's still interesting, like with all the flashbacks about Endor's past, mm -hmm. uh, and all you know how, th and really you know what the series is pretty good at doing is to show us how the the empire really works, like mm -hmm. the inner workings of the empire. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you know all the politics involved mm. so that's I think that's what the series is really good at doing <laughs> even mm. though it can if you're not into that sort of um, I guess uh, I don't know political stuff you may find it a little bit too serious right uh, mm. and and a bit and a bit too uh, I don't know like dry because <clears throat> it doesn't have your normal Star Wars elements like lightsabers, you know, yeah, yeah. lightsaber fights, the Force, that kind of thing. It's really just not there. This is really more of a, uh, I don't know, like a more of a political drama <laughs> mm. <Yeah. clears throat> than, than your trigger Star Wars, which is... I can see why uh, people love it so much, actually, just because it feels so different mm. from uh, the Star Wars that they're used to. Mm. I think overall, I would, I would, I would still give it a seven. Mm. Even though I'm, I'm not loving it, I can, I can um, appreciate it uh, um, mm. for what it's trying to do. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so to me though, yeah. it, this series has given me some good up and downs, but unfortunately this episode was kind of slow. And they normally say I don't really mind slow episodes, but this series, I do tend to think that it kind of overdoes it, mm. especially with this many slow episodes already. Mm. It it tends to be a bit annoying, but I guess they are trying to flesh out a lot of the whole political side of things. Mm. Meaning it's not going to be for kids anymore. It's going to be more for the adults, which understand all of these mm. political jargon and all of these happenings of what's happening in the background. Kids would not understand it at all. They'll just watch it and say, what does all this mean? Mm. So I think you do need to know some things of political stuff in the world, especially now with like a actual war going on mm. in like the Ukraine and Russia, which is absolutely crazy, especially mm. in this time. Mm. So once you look at that, do you do see some overlap between the two, especially like police states mm. and everything that's going on mm. but overall this episode not going to be good 4.5 mm. actually IGN is still really loving it it seems we really love Endor this one is a is an 8 this mm. is um, once again trade spectacle for setup so it's saying that it's setting it up, setting up for for something for a payoff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And apparently it's been confirmed that Tales of the Jedi will be all six episodes released all at once. Wow. Oh wow, that's fast. Well, how long is one episode? Half an Run, hour. Runs for first episode. They already have the names of the episodes and the lengths. 
Episode one titled Life and Death will run for 17 minutes. Oh, that's, oh, that's, that's very short. <laughs> Episode two, Justice, is 14 minutes. Episode three, The Sith Lord, is 14 oh. minutes. They're not very long at all. We can, we Praxis can makes that, perfect. Yeah. Episode four, 13 minutes. Episode five, Coda, 15 minutes. Episode six, Choices, 14 minutes. Mm-hmm. Essentially, we could watch it all about in an hour. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we might consider that, and like, should we do it all at once? It'll be a bit too much to do end or end or that. Yes, yeah. yeah, so we might, maybe we could do do it on like the Friday, maybe because it it's going to be like all all in one so it's like the whole hour length it's actually more than an hour mm. yeah but we'll figure that out probably we'll do it on the friday and then we could do it all all at once then and or still on the saturday mm. unless we want to do it one by one we'll figure that out one by one well he's on his 15 minutes for episode. Oh, you you mean like yeah, like watch, watch Andor and then like the, one Andor, one, one Andor, yeah. yeah, one Andor, one Tales, sort of every Saturday. Yeah, that works too. I mean, yeah. that, that's that's I guess another way of so, of doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll figure it out. Yeah. yeah well, um. I didn't uh, say that much of it, so you know. Um... <laughs> you fell asleep, huh? Too slow, too slow. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, but uh, what I did say, you know, um, it was going okay, but you know, it didn't. It's like uh, uh, parts that they were doing. Um, yeah. It's just dragging on um, yeah. unnecessarily. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it. Uh, he's uh, uh, not. Uh, this episode's kind of making him uh, seem not, not, not like. Uh, uh, decent good guy, but more, more like a um, guy that's just going to like go uh, where, where the money is. Mm. And yeah, um, I can't really give it an accurate score, but I, yeah, um, I'd have to score it. Uh, maybe five, four or five, yeah. Mm. You see, it, um, parts that I was watching, I was gonna, I was thinking, it, um, so something good's gonna happen because it's just been going on and on, and nothing, nothing happened. Nothing happened. <laughs> mm. Well, yeah, I mean, it's all set up, right? It's all set up. Yeah, but... Yeah, uh, but for a series like this, I do kind of agree, but it's kind of over slow. Some slowness is good, but this one is just a bit too much. Yeah, it's like uh, last week, uh, it was uh, really um, full-on with the uh, uh, the theft. um, Yes, yes, yes. The the host of the um, all money and now uh, we've got uh, some idea what's happening with the money, but um, um, it just seems like it was backfiring on them uh, because now you know uh, the. Um, uh, They've uh, got um, uh, 
the um, uh, the stormtroopers and everything like that are really, you know, just um, on them and just uh, basically, you know, it, um, it sounds as if, you know, you'll uh, just get um, uh, killed for sneezing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's... And and what, what did he get? Six Six years? Six years, and, and all he was trying to do was go shopping. Like, mm. like he was just going to a grocery store. It, it's a bit yeah. ridiculous to be arrested mm. for going to a supermarket, basically. You know. I guess yeah. That is what I'm trying to show is you know how how little the empire cares about people, right? Mm. It's just they're just nothing in the eyes of the uh, imperial force forces. I mean, the, the heist was really catalytic, catalytic and really pissing off on the Empire. Yeah. I mm. mean, the, the Empire was basically, you know, uh, all from, from, from our point of view, um, it wasn't really caring about, uh, well, no, I can't say that, because, you know, what we saw a lot of, uh, people in slavery and stuff. Yeah, but, yeah. So, uh, but, you know, like, um, um, stealing um, the payroll heist, um, well, is that going to achieve much? Hmm. I mean, with the amount of money that they stole, um, it will probably fund quite a lot of missions you know, for the Rebel Alliance. Yeah. yeah. So it will achieve it from, it's, it's like, a financial from point of view. Um, yeah. To step up. Especially oh, because yeah. Mon Mothma had been was a bit restricted. Like, she could, she mentioned she couldn't just dip in and out of her family and family's finances unnoticed anymore. That... Yeah. that it doesn't so, seem that... Yeah. Um, um, they're going to be crippled uh, much because it was just like a um, week's uh, wages. Oh no, no, mm -hmm. it was like I it's the money, but um, exactly how much did they spend? Um, uh, still, yeah, mm -hmm. a lot of credits, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, true, maybe, yeah. maybe it wouldn't be a big blow. I mean, it's still a blow, but. Still a blow, but you know, um, I think it, it really, yeah, I, I think it, it makes the makes the empire sit up and take notice to say, hey, maybe there's something more to this little resistance than they first thought, like the, you know, and pay attention, yeah. I mean, something mm. like this was quite major news, um. That at least it was considered that, and it allowed, and it made them, you know, tighten up security and and yeah. change, um, you know, imperial laws and how they sort of treated, you know, what they considered rebel activity. So yeah. All right. So no score from Bill. Oh yeah, four or five. Yeah, four or five. Yeah. Four or five. Yeah.